to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered and said, Shall not Shimei, Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should be adversaries to me today? Shall any man be put to death today in Israel? For do I not know that today I am king over Israel? Therefore a king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king swore to him. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. And he had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed until the day he returned in peace. So it was when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go to the king because your servant is lame, and he has slandered your servant to my lord the king, but my lord the king is like the angel of God. Therefore do what is good in your eyes, for all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet you set your servant among those who eat at your own table. Therefore, what right have I still to cry out any more to the king? So the king said to him, Why do you speak any more of your matters? I have said, You and Ziba divide the land. Then Mephibosheth said to the king, Rather, let him take it all, and as much as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house. And Barzillai the Gileadite came down from Rogelim and went across the Jordan with the king to escort him across the Jordan. Now Barzillai was a very aged man, eighty years old, and he had provided the king with supplies while he stayed at Mahanaim, for he was a very rich man. And the king said to Barzillai, Come across with me, and I will provide for you while you are with me in Jerusalem. But Barzillai said to the king, How long have I to leave that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am today eighty years old. Can I discern between the good and bad? Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any longer the voice of sinking men and sinking women? Why then should your servant be a further burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little while across the Jordan with the king. And why should the king repay me with such a reward? Please let your servant turn back again, that I may die in my own city, near the grave of my father and mother. But here is your servant, Chimham. Let him cross over him with my lord the king, and do for him what seems good to you. And the king answered, Chimham shall cross over with me, and I will do for him what seems good to me. Now, whatever your request of me, I will do for you. Then all the people went over the Jordan, and when the king had crossed over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his own place. Now the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him, and all the people of Judah escorted the king, and also half the people of Israel. Amen. Now everything had been set in order after God allowed after God allowed David to be tempted so that his faith may be tested. He also permitted this so that it would be proved that David would stay in the will of God no matter who this would be. So as God saw truly David to stand as God wanted him in His will, in the will of God, this is something that God usually does. Before any intervention and blessing 
that he that God has planned to bring in man's life, first of all, he has to go through a great trial. Remember Abraham, for whom God had decided to give. God had decided to give to through Abraham a unique promise, a unique promise, a blessing to the entire humankind that would believe in the word of God. Through him, God would give, and He gave the unique blessing by saying. Blessing you, I will bless you. I will bless your seed, and I will make you as the stars of heaven, and as the sound of the by the by the sea. The gates of heaven shall not prevail against you, and this will come because you have obeyed in my voice, because you have obeyed in my commandment, and the commandment of the Lord was very difficult. To do, he gave him a commandment: go to sacrifice your only begotten son, whom you love, and the mount that I will lead you, so that you may do this. It's impossible to do this with human power, and that's what exactly happened, and immediately, because what is important is not. The obedience in the word of God, but also the timing and the way. The timing is right away, and the way is to do it wholeheartedly. Because in so doing, we prove that we love God. So Abraham is a unique man, without hesitating at all, at all, without being delayed. He took his son. And he started to go up on the Mount of Moriah to sacrifice him. But this was also the fruit of the work of his faith, because he counted as much as soon as he heard the voice of God, he counted his voice that he who promised me that through my seed all the nations will be blessed, he is faithful. He who has promised me is faithful. He cannot deny himself. So if he asks me to sacrifice me, sacrifice him, he has something in his mind that that can be nothing else than to raise him from the dead. So having this faith that he would sacrifice him and that the Father would raise him, he started to do this work. And he obeyed, and the way that he obeyed and the timing was perfect, so that when he arrived there in the third day, God had already captured a goat and the place that was Avram to sacrifice his son, so that when he would be ready to sacrifice his son, a voice of God was heard: "Do not do this." For this is the good that you will sacrifice. So the obedience has power when it is by faith, and when it is done right away. And this is the characteristic that God is、uh, searching to find among people. There couldn't be any other man. The father of Jesus, but Joseph, because he was the one who had these characteristics. He trusted completely the word of God, and he did the word of God firstly by faith, and secondly, right away. These are the characteristics that we have to ask from God, because from then and on, the man that has these characteristics to ask to listen the word of God, and Right away, to believe, and right away to do. This is the trustful man in the sight of God, as David was, for which God 
I would even dare to say that he called him with enthusiasm that I have found the man of God and David according to my heart because he does all my wills the trial that David went through was very difficult his son whom he loved very much rebelled against him exiled him and his son seeked his death the death of his father but God delivered him and Absalom was killed and now David returns back not him but God retur returns him back returns him back glorious all those who supported Absalom they found themselves in a dead end now what are we going to do with all assurance whoever takes the decision that is out of the will of God without prayer without the guidance of God without having the fear of God without seeking God no matter what decision he may take one is sure that he will end up to dead end because his judgments and his decisions come not from the guidance of God or from the fear of God that he has but come uh, from his pleasures from, he, from the desires of his heart because that's what he wants to do or from his thoughts and his logic because that's what he thought that would be good but we have said many times that the counsels of God are not the same with the counsels of man and reversed the counsels of men are not the, with, according to the counsels of God because a man sees the phenomenon and perhaps the past and the present but he can't see neither the future things to come unless God reveals, reveals them to him so God favored David and those who were with Absalom they found themselves in a dead end now what are we going to do Absalom died whom we had king over us but David whom we rejected it was the one who saved us till now and now he's the only one who can save us as a king and so they started to take a position of changing their mind and other um, a position of repentance from the one hand they said that I did a mistake I will correct it which is not what pleases God but repentance which is pleasing to our God is that I have sinned to you Lord and I have done the evil before you forgive me and I repent and I forsake and I forsake my actions so there is a changing of mind and repentance when we change our mind then God doesn't take part in correcting the things but the man is trying by himself to settle things but with failure but repentance is the one who brings success because God participates in resolving the things and correcting things since the man forsakes and leaves the actions that he has done so the people of Israel the ten tribes of Israel started discussing what are we going to do and being in a dead end they made a nice and unique decision why 
they would delay to bring David back as a king. And it's something that we avoid. We delay many times to seek the Lord. We think about it. We delay. And the man doesn't know the consequences of this. On the contrary, when we hurry, seeking God, seeking the love of God and the grace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit has always the best results. The best possible results. We can think of all the rest things, all of the rest things, but we shouldn't think about it seeking God. On the contrary, we have to hurry to seek the love of God the Father, the grace of Christ, and to have the fellowship and the power of the Holy Spirit. So, why do you delay to bring back the King? And they say to this question, they delayed. So, they say to the tribe of Judah, Why have you stolen our king? Because you have delayed. The kingdom of God is taken and people take it by force. We have to be quickly to listen and slow to speak. We have to be always careful and not to hurry unless this is for us to seek God. The kingdom of, key, uh, of God is taken and those and, and people who take it by force. So, David sent to Zadok and Abiathar, the priest saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house? You are my brethren, you are my flesh. They were from the tribe of Judah, as we say David also. Why did David show this preference to Judah and not to Israel? This is not partiality, but this is the truth. Always the Word of God speaks about having a preference to those who are of faith. Of course, God loves all people. Of course, God has given the commandment to us to love our neighbor as ourselves. But especially for our brethren, He has given a new commandment, a unique commandment. There is no other commandment like this. And this is to love your brother as Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, God, the real God, the man Jesus Christ as a mediator has loved you. Nowhere else is there any such commandment, neither among believers nor in the Bible, in the Word of God, but also in the thoughts of man. To love our brother as Christ has loved us, as God has loved us. This is the love of those who are of faith, which surpasses every limit. Of course, we could say that this commandment does not apply. It is not possible to apply. No one can say that I will love all my brethren as Christ has loved me or some brethren, or even one. But what is interesting in the Word of God, that God always gives a way out what in the mind of man seems to be a dead end. As it is written that everything is possible for God. 
and everything is possible for him who believes. As it is also that there is not even one just man. And the word of God assures us that we we, we are fault. We have fault in many things. And the word of God says that you cannot become a righteous man, but you can do something that if you do it, then I will count you as a righteous man. And this is to believe to him whom I have sent, Jesus Christ, to believe in his words. And this faith will be counted to you for righteousness, and you will give me the opportunity, me, the Father, the God, the Father, to give you authority to become a child of God. And that is to regenerate you and to make you my child. By your faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the sinful man is not only counted a righteous man in the sight of God, but he is also turns from a creature of God to a child of God. Not because of his power or strength, but by grace. And this is by faith, by his faith. So as we are counted righteous men in the sight of God because we have accepted Jesus Christ and this authority is given to us to become children of God, that is, heirs uh, of God, of the eternal life. And we become um, heirs with Jesus Christ and we become like Him. So in the same way, God gives us this ability to be counted doers of the word and commandments that is impossible for us to do. Only in, uh, in our effort to know which is the will of God and to do it a work that we can do whatever we can do. And God says He sees that we do what, what we can do knowing our weakness, the human weakness, which means that we can do very few things, but since the things that we do, we do them in the appointed time, then God counts us as doer of his words of his word even of the law which no one could practice and be saved we are saved by grace and in the same way we are counted by grace by faith and our intention to do at least the things that we can we are counted because of this as a doers of the word and even of the law of God. Of course, of the word of God, which is even much more difficult. So to those who are of faith, of faith David responds and says that I am from you and you are uh, with me. Why didn't you invite me right away and I listen to the people of Israel to speak, hesitating this, and it is weird. People from the world to think in a better way, than in some cases think the, chil the children of God the people, and Christ says this, that the people of the world have even great chil greater wisdom than the sons of the kingdom. And because this goes in the children of God, for the children of God, because we get used of the words of God, of the blessing of God, and the presence of God, God stills up our sincere mind so that we may return back and seek God again which happened in the people of Israel 
that after the invitation of David, they called him as one man, as one man, and they told him, "Come and become our king." So, from the one hand, they hesitated, and those who didn't want to call him obeyed him right away. And this is like the parable that Jesus Christ said that there was a father that had two children, and he said to the one, "Go and work to my field," and he said, "I will go," but he never did. He hesitated to go, and he said to the other one, "Go and work in my field," and he said, "I will not go." But later on, he th thought about it, and he repented, and he went. And so his question is, who did the will of God? Beyond any other thoughts, the will of God did it. The one who did this work. This is the one that pleases God, and to him God is pleased. So our Lord Jesus Christ said something very serious. You will not enter. He who says, "Lord, Lord," shall not enter into the kingdom of God. He who prays, he who glorifies the Lord, he who studies the Word, is not the one who will enter in the kingdom of God. This is the main. This is not the main characteristic to go closer to God, so that you may stay there. The main characteristic is that you draw closer to God, so that. God may draw closer to you and tell you what to do, so that you may do it. So he who says "Lord" and "Lord" shall not enter, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And James insists, "Let not anyone who hesitates think that he will receive anything from the Lord." Hesitation is not a characteristic of a blessed man, because he's like the waves, who go back and front, but they never go any further, no matter how why, how much wild they are. Because a man who is double-minded, should I go? Should I not go? He is disorder, disorderly in in all his ways. But the man who prays, and he goes on. He is the one who enters to the kingdom of heaven, and he is the blessed one. He is a trustful man, because what is important for the man of God is to enter into the kingdom of heaven richly, but also the most important to do His will in the way that God wants us to do it with faith and right away. Hesitation brings delay. And perhaps even to make God to go away from intervening. So Judas right away called him and accepted him as one man. And where there is agreement, when there is one opinion, there is this one spiritual law. I cannot be transgressed that when there is one opinion. Then there is the favor of God. When we have agreement in our inner man, that is the voice of the flesh, the voice of the heart, and the voice of our spirit to agree with the will of God, no matter what we decide, will be favored, will be prospered. When there is one opinion in one family, when the man and the wife have one opinion. According to the will of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then with all assurance they will prosper. And the same goes for a local church, in a meeting of an elders, an assembly of a church. If we have the same mind, we will prosper in everything. But the man who separates his position from this agreement loses his way. He loses his wisdom. He loses the revelation of God. He loses the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and in the end, he stays all alone. May God keep us safe, so that we may walk 
having one opinion that is according to the voice of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But even if this one opinion has some mistakes, since there is a sincerity in the heart of man and the fear of God, even if he does mistakes, God will prosper him again. But then God will come with love to correct him and turn him to the right way, to the right direction. So Judas, without, hesitated, without hesitating, accepted um, David as a king. And all Judah went to the river of Jordan to call him, to receive him, and to bring him back to Jerusalem. Now we will see the position of people who, uh, who had a contrary position according to the will of God and against David. First was Shimei who was a Benjamite which when David departed he cursed him, he reviled him he despised him by saying him that you are a sinner that you are full of blood and that you have wronged soul and his family now bags brings this iniquities that you did over you. Then Abishai the son and um, had asked from David to kill him but David said that he who revives me doesn't do it by himself. He who curses me and revives me does he, does, he doesn't do this by himself but God has put him to do this. Now this is a revelation brethren. God has put him to revile me, to curse me, to humble me, so that he may see how I will stand before God, not before Shimei. Will I become angry? Will I punish him? Or will I humble myself and say, God who put him, God can humble him and exalt me if I humble myself. So, that is, he who humbles himself is exalted. But he who is trying to exalt himself, to justify himself, to seek and claim for himself things, even to make judgment against other people, even having right, he's not the one who pleases God. He who acts with his human righteousness doesn't please his God because the human righteousness is, righteousness is like a filthy rug. But he who humbles himself, he's the one who is blessed by God and he thinks that God could have prevailed him from cursing me and reviling me. But he doesn't do this. On the contrary, He sent him so and thinks that if I humble myself and as he is exalted when he revives me, curse me, if I humble myself then God will exalt me and he will humble him, which is something that happened. So we shouldn't become angry when someone accuses us, when someone reviles us, even curses us. That's why Christ says, Love your enemies. Pray and th bless those who, who curse you and hate you and do good to those who harm you. Why? Because and so doing, doing the will of God, God owes favor to you because you have taken this position of humility. And I would even dare to say to, that you have re taken this place of the last of being the last because for someone to sacrifice for him who loves it's a, a right thing but someone to humble himself for the man who hates him this is the grace of God this is the greatest humility to humble myself to 
a brother that loves me very much, I would dare to say that it's easy thing. But to, to humble myself to him who reviled me and to curse me, this is the grace of God. God owes a favor to the man who takes this place, this position. So, so he humbled himself and he said, The king is coming. And he took his man with him and he said to him, I did a mistake, do not count me, do not count this to me. He didn't, he couldn't even uh, make an excuse. And again, Abishai, the man of the flesh, of revenge, he said, should I go and kill him? But now he is asking David, would you allow me to go and kill him? He doesn't know with whom he has to do. What will this man of God tell me to do? And David told him the same words. What is between me and you? God has made me a king. This is a day of blessing. Will we kill this day people? And he swore to Shimei that I will not harm you ever. Now, not only David humbles himself, which is the greatest humility, when he cursed him and reviled him. Now David humbles himself when Shimei asks for forgiveness and humbles himself before him. Brethren, this is a great secret. To humble yourself to him who is exalted or to him who is humbled. You should humble yourself even more. It won't benefit you to fulfill your own righteousness. This temporarily it might give you um, um, satisfaction, self-satisfaction, but it won't um, benefit you in your relationship with God and in the continuous in your life. The blessed man is he who knows first to humble himself, and this does not go. If I humble myself, then harm will come to him. These are human excuses, and forgive me before God this other foolishness. You will humble yourself no matter what he will do, no matter how he will think. You won't think in the way that he's thinking, but you will think as God thinks. God gives grace to the humble man, not in mind but in actions. And it's a great thing to enjoy in our life the grace of God because we can humble our hearts. We can humble our flesh. We can humble our spirit and ask help from God. We should ask from God to give us this power. We shouldn't leave our thoughts, our desires, what pleases us, to lead us to other ways that one that might not bring you to a bad um, result, but surely there won't be the blessing of God. This is not an easy thing. This is not at all easy to do it. It's an easy thing to preach it, but it's not easy to do it. But I assure you that as many times as I have done this, I have found the favor of God really great in my life. Whoever humbles himself first is the one who will enjoy the, the grace of God gloriously. And especially in our fellowship with our brethren. Because when there is an unbeliever, a man that doesn't know God, that is not re regenerating, you can excuse him, you say that he doesn't know, he's a man of the world, but when you come to contradiction with your brother, then you cannot excuse him. 
then your ego is stirred up, rises up. The fl your flesh, the heart, the arrogant spirit rises up, and it's difficult. But there is the triumph of the Christian. There, if you humble yourself, you will see the grace of God glorious in your life. This was the first lesson that God taught me with an old sister with exactly the same things when I had become a believer I and Anna and God has written those things into my heart you can excuse the unbeliever and forgive him but when two brothers come in contradiction then your ego rises up then your heart rises up and your spirit the arrogant spirit the carnal man rises up it's difficult then to humble yourself but whoever achieve this then he has become triumph this is a triumph this is a triumph in the name of Jesus Christ and very soon Mephibosheth came also who was who was the son of Saul whom his servant Sheba deceived him because he couldn't come by himself because he was slain he didn't help him and he went and met David by himself and tell him that Sheba believes that he will inherit God doesn't explain to us the thoughts of Sheba why did he do this with evilness or deceitfulness but what we can see is that Mephibosheth from the moment that David left never did he shave his moustache nor did he wash his feet till the day that David returned back this is a truth with actions and David understood this and he said I have promised Sheba to take all the fortune all the riches of Saul the riches to you to take it then you should share it with him then Barzillai came who was an old man 80 years old a rich man who lived at Mahanaim where David had escaped when he was persecuted and there he fed him because he had the ability to do this he was a faithful man a believer in God and his faith had actions was with actions he didn't give him he didn't make just mercy to him but he fed him and all the people that were around him and he did this with works of faith because the Christian man has love and he who has love doesn't keep anything for himself when is to do the will of God and the work of God and now the moment of the reward came David told him come with me to Jerusalem there I will take care of you as you took care of me and I will take care of you in a royal way but Barzillai knows very well the reality he says I'm an old man what should I send so I do not taste what I eat why should you take care of me neither can I listen to the singing men and singing women what is left for me is to stay here at my house and to be buried near the grave of my fathers but I want to ask you a, uh, a favor to take care of my son Chimham this position of Barzillai is very nice this is a, a position of wisdom 
you know, there are people that are 80, 90 years old that say, how can I invest my money so that I may make even more money? And they made dreams as if it was that they would live 200 years. These people live in deceit and vanity. Abraham is a good example who lived in tents because he was waiting the New Jerusalem. What revelation did this man have? The one that wasn't made with hands. He was waiting for that city. And he died living in tents. He didn't make luxury things for himself. Because he was waiting for the eternal. For the eternal things to come, the heavenly and those that were unshakable. And Barzillai has the same mindset. What are you telling me now? My, God, my son is younger. Him you should take care, but leave me. And David hung him and kissed him, greeted him, and he took his son with him. And he didn't leave him as long as he lived but continually with the promises that he gave to Solomon he l and in these promises Shimham lived also it is better to take care for our brothers and sisters than to take care for ourselves this is what God wants. On the contrary, it's not a nice thing to leave others and to take care of ourselves. The care that is expressed with prayer and with an, any other expression of love is the one that pleases God. But let us not forget that this care should also have the wisdom of God which is nothing else than the fear of God. Because the beginning of, uh, of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So the man who lives with the fear of the Lord has wisdom. And if his heart is even filled with love, that this is a man that is faithful in the sight of God, in the hands of God, and in the work of God. Amen.